scientists are horrified to discover the existence of an ancient creature living in the heart of a mountain. It is hundreds of meters long and hungers for human sacrifice. Two government agents are conducting secret research at the foot of Mount Lincoln. Noticing unusual activity underground, one of the agents contacts headquarters to report the situation. Suddenly, a violent earthquake occurs, and steam erupts from the bowels of the earth, leaving deep marks on the female agent's face. Seeing that his partner is no longer breathing, the agent tries to flee from the anomalous phenomenon, but is crushed by a huge boulder on the way. He lets go of his black briefcase, which rolls to the edge of the cliff. In another part of the woods, a logging crew led by Thomas Walsh also feels the ground shake. A particularly violent jolt breaks a branch from a tree and it falls, pinning the man's leg. At first, the team is relieved that their colleague got off easy, but after a few seconds, the worker inexplicably stops showing signs of life. In a research lab, a seismologist named Emily is concerned about the frequent earthquakes that occur in the town. Satellite images show the movement of the tectonic plates beneath Mount Lincoln, which has been linked to volcanism. The girl decides to climb the mountain to get a closer look at the anomaly and to warn the town's residents in case of danger. Distraught, Thomas returns home to his father, William. In the past, the old man was a respected professor, but now he is considered a local weirdo. All because of his belief in the existence of an ancient creature nicknamed Behemoth, hiding inside the mountain. The son is very skeptical of his father's bizarre research, thinking that after his wife passed away he is becoming senile. He asks William to take medication to stay sane, but the man ignores his request. Thomas has a flighty younger sister, Grace, who is completely consumed with her relationship with her boyfriend, Gerard. Despite her older brother's warnings of danger, the girl plans to go on a romantic hike up Mount Lincoln. Meanwhile, another government agent, Jack Murray, heads to town on the trail of the missing expedition. An earthquake occurs once again and he has to pull his car over. Thus, he witnesses an unusual vapor release from the ground. Thomas brings William to the diner, where he assists with the bookkeeping. The guests are greeted by a friendly waitress, Zoe. When the old man leaves to fetch his notes, the girl anxiously tells Thomas that his father has been mixing up words lately while talking. Immersed in depressing thoughts about William's health, the man goes outside, where he meets his old friend Emily. The seismologist tells him that she has come to town to investigate the cause of the increasing number of tremors. The woman hopefully offers to take Thomas out to dinner, but Walsh Jr. politely declines and leaves. Zoe sits down at a table with William and asks him about his drawings of mythical creatures. The old man tells a legend about a monster that dwells in the bowels of the earth. Every time people bring the earth to the point of self-destruction by their actions, unknown forces appear and save it. The Mayans believed it was this creature, but, but every culture has its own version. The girl only laughs at William's story. Suddenly, the establishment begins to shake from more underground tremors. The man looks anxiously at his sketches of ancient creatures, sensing that something terrible is approaching. A local man notices a puff of smoke coming from his car. He moves closer to it when suddenly caustic steam bursts out of the ground at him. The man tries to run away in a panic, but the ground beneath his feet begins to collapse, and he sinks into the resulting abyss. Soon his house, too, sinks beneath the ground. The next day, Emily climbs Mount Lincoln, where she records seismic activity readings. There is a strong possibility that the volcano, which has been inactive for a long time, may be awakening again. The girl contacts a colleague in order to request the necessary equipment so as to prevent harm from a natural cataclysm. Suddenly her attention is drawn to the breathless bodies of squirrels beneath her feet. She tells her colleague about it, and he makes a disturbing suggestion. I'd say it sounds like we have CO2 leaking. All over the mountain, I gotta go. Thomas and the local sheriff arrive at the scene of the tragedy the day before to reconstruct the chain of events. Suddenly, the police officer's dog falls to the ground and begins whimpering pitifully. Emily drives up to the men and tells them to get the dog off the ground immediately. She informs them that earthquakes at the mountain have triggered the release of poisonous carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. You can't see it or smell it, you just drift off to sleep. Thomas surmises that this is what has happened to his subordinate. Emily warns the sheriff that the volcano is waking up again and insists that people be evacuated. To which the policeman says that 30 years ago the townspeople were also frightened by strong underground tremors, but nothing ever happened. He tries to avoid panic among the population and, for the time being, decides to simply restrict people from climbing the mountain. Meanwhile, William listens to reports of global disasters. He tells his daughter that the earth is on the path to self-destruction and that something is about to happen that will stop it from destroying itself. The old man anxiously warns of the need to prepare for the arrival of another worldly force, describing the destruction by Tiamat, the mythical embodiment of chaos. According to the legend, the enemy was able to overpower the creature by firing an arrow into its fire-breathing mouth. It was the only way to kill her. He split her heart in two, and, and, and Tiamat was no more. Grace perceives her father's story as just another lunatic's ramblings and leaves the house to go see Gerard. Upon her return to town, 
Emily shows Thomas recent satellite photos. It appears as if the earth tremors are moving up the mountain. The girl assumes that some unknown anomaly inside Lincoln is fracturing everything in its path, creating new lava flows and carbon dioxide emissions. Emily plans to climb to the top again to unravel the cause of the anomaly. Outside, Walsh Jr. is found by Jack Murray and introduces himself to him as a geologist. He tells Thomas that he has been recommended as a mountain guide because he is searching for lost valuable equipment. The man served in the army as a helicopter pilot and his help will be indispensable for the task. Meanwhile, Grace and her boyfriend go on a hike, but the girl can't stop worrying about her somewhat crazy family. Gerard reassures her and tells her that they can take their minds off things in the mountains, but the couple have no idea how wrong they are. Emily climbs the mountain and sends her observations to a colleague. In response, the guy gives her disturbing news about global cataclysms that are occurring everywhere on Earth. Communication is suddenly interrupted by a new earthquake. Mount Lincoln fractures and a rockfall ensues. William shares his concerns with the sheriff about the mysterious force threatening the Earth. From the depths of obscurity ascends a creature with one purpose and one purpose only to destroy civilization. The sheriff looks sadly at his old comrade, deciding that he has finally lost his mind. He warns William that he will face involuntary treatment if he does not address his mental health. The disappointed old man leaves, realizing that he has no one to support him. Thomas and Jack go up into the mountains. The guide warns the agent not to bend too low to the ground to avoid carbon dioxide poisoning. They discover the equipment left behind by the last expedition near one of the rocks. Thomas tries to find out who Murray is and asks the man about his current occupation. Jack only tells him that his colleagues disappeared in the area earlier. He shows him the coordinates and tells him that his intended destination is at the top of Lincoln. Among the debris they find the mutilated body of the female agent, which further alarms Thomas. Emily, who miraculously managed to survive the mountain's rupture, comes running towards them. She tells her friend that they need to get back to town as soon as possible and warn the locals. Jack plans to climb Lincoln despite the danger. Thomas refuses to escort him further but tells him the right way. Evening arrives, Grace and Gerard set up their tent at the foot of the mountain. The guy is visibly nervous, preparing to say the important words. He gets down on one knee in front of his beloved and proposes. Grace smiles happily, but her smile abruptly changes to one of dismay. A crack appears in the mountain behind Gerard, out of which a huge eye stares at them. Within seconds, the monster attacks the couple with its tentacle, sending them scrambling away in terror. Emily and Thomas return to town and tell the sheriff to evacuate the population immediately. The man continues to have doubts, but the seismologist insists that the threat to the town is real, and time is running out. Eventually the sheriff gives up and promises to notify the locals. Agent Murray contacts his headquarters and reports that he has managed to salvage a flash drive with recordings from the previous expedition. They have determined that the epicenter of the alien object is inside Mount Lincoln. Time is running out and humanity will soon encounter a unique phenomenon. Grace and Gerard try to hide in the woods from the monster. Clouds of smoke erupt from the ground, and the guy assumes that it is being spewed by the ancient creature. Frightening sounds are heard all around and the girl begins to cry in fear. The ground beneath their feet begins to tremble yet again. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Are you? Yeah. Okay. Let's get out of here. In the morning, the sheriff alerts the population to the threat and asks them to move 20 miles out of town. William informs his son that Grace has gone to the mountains and is unaware of the impending danger. Thomas tells his father to evacuate to a nearby town and wait for him there. In parting, the old man gives his son a talisman bracelet that will protect him on the road. Emily and Thomas head for the mountains, and William stops by the diner to take Zoe to safety. Along the way, Emily strikes up a conversation about the past. After Mrs. Walsh's tragic death, Thomas decided to go into military service, while his younger sister stayed behind to look after her grief-stricken father. Back then, the boy ran away not only from his family, but also from Emily, who was planning a future together with him. Thomas responds that not all plans are destined to come true. The couple meets Jack along the way, who has injured his leg while climbing the mountain. They urge the man to return to town and evacuate, but he is determined to do whatever it takes to carry out his orders and find the lost suitcase containing important equipment. A powerful earthquake sweeps through the city. William asks Zoe to hurry, but the dutiful girl can't abandon the diner. The establishment begins to collapse underground and the people inside are trapped. Emily insists that Jack explain to them the real purpose of his expedition to the mountains. The agent tells them that six months ago, intelligence agencies around the world detected a strange underground rumble that simultaneously echoed in 18 locations around the globe. The strongest source was traced back here, specifically a mile below Mount Lincoln. The government has sent an expedition to the mountain to find confirmation of the unique phenomenon. They speculate that an event of this magnitude first occurred 30,000 years ago, then repeated again 15,000 years later, and now it is about to happen again. 
the lost suitcase is the only chance to confront what is about to burst out of the bowels of the earth. At this point, a giant tentacle bursts out of the mountain and knocks away Jack with a powerful blow. Emily and Thomas, still in shock, run up to the agent, who is choking on red liquid. With his last breath, he asks them to retrieve the suitcase. You gotta get the case. It's a weapon inside. William and Zoe come to their senses and are overwhelmed by terror when they realize that they have been pulled underground. There is no communication, and there is no one to help them. The situation gets even worse when a monster tentacle crawls near the cafe. A downpour begins in the mountains. Emily and Thomas find the suitcase at the coordinates, but it is on the very edge of a cliff. The girl tries to convince her friend that it is a waste of time. They must find Grace and flee the city as quickly as possible. But Thomas is convinced that they must try to save the world from the monster. He goes down to the ledge to get the suitcase and tosses it up. Emily accidentally lets go of the case and it rolls swiftly downward. Meanwhile, William and Zoe try to seal the cracks in the windows to keep the carbon dioxide from entering the cafe. However, the girl inhales the poisonous smoke and almost faints. The old man tells her to stay away from the windows and the floor, and frantically tries to find a way out of the trap. Fortunately, Thomas manages to grab the suitcase at the last moment and he hands it to Emily. The guy tries to climb up, but his foot slips on a wet rock and he loses his balance. He is saved from falling off the cliff by his father's talisman, which clings to the root of a tree. Grace and Gerard are still trying to find a safe way into town, but powerful underground tremors push them to the edge of a cliff. The jaws of the monster burst from beneath them and Gerard plummets straight down into it. Grace is also close to falling but is rescued by her older brother and Emily. When her sister recovers from the shock, Thomas reveals a further plan of action. They must reach the ranger camp, which is located at the bottom of the mountain range. This place is used for an emergency landing, so there should be a helicopter there to get them out of here. At the diner, William explains that the creature responsible for this earthquake is the behemoth, the harbinger of the end of days. Once every 15,000 years he comes to earth when mankind is stalled, to give life a new push through destruction. The man discovers a hatch that leads to the roof. They put up a ladder and the old man successfully climbs up. Meanwhile, the monster completely bursts out triggering a massive earthquake. Zoe falls down the ladder and loses consciousness. William comes down to the girl and brings her to her senses, but then falls to the floor himself as he tries to get up. The old man barely gets to his feet and, thanks to Zoe's help, they finally make it to the top. Meanwhile, the trio encounter the enraged behemoth in the mountains. It's the size of the world. It is the mountain. Barely dodging his tentacles, they still manage to get to the helicopter and start it up. Thomas pulls the weapon out of the suitcase and tries to figure out exactly where to aim it. Grace remembers her father's story about destroying the Tiamat and yells to her brother to shoot into the monster's mouth. Thomas fires the missile and it hits the behemoth's larynx, tearing it open from the inside. The trio escapes in the helicopter, watching the powerful explosion. At the end of the story, all five survivors are reunited and happily embrace each other. Thomas suggests that Emily stick around town and they join together in a kiss. Do you believe in the existence of mythical creatures? Like this video and write your answer in the comments.